Welcome. For those of you who've been with me since day one, thank you. For my new people, hey. So for today's recipe, we are going to be making arroz con gandules, also known as rice and peas. This is a staple at every Hispanic event. You will find this at a christening, birthday party, Thanksgiving dinner, and even at a funeral. If they don't have this on the menu, I would almost question everything else they're serving. And if you're from New York, we all know we love the rice from the Dominican restaurant on the corner, but this is better homemade. So let's get to it. So before we get into the ingredients you need for this recipe, this one is gonna be a little bit different from what you're used to if you watch my other adventures because I'm not gonna give you measurements for everything prior to we start cooking. So for this recipe, you will need one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, but you're only gonna use half. Adobo, Jen's Sazon, my homemade sofrito, which you can find the recipe for this in Adventure 10. One can of guandules, one chicken bouillon cube, salt, three tablespoons of vegetable oil, and our rice. So for this recipe, the way we measured our rice was using our cans of the peas. So instead of using a one cup measurement, you're using this can, and we're gonna use the can also to measure the water. Disclaimer, if you are watching the person making your rice and you notice that they're not making it in this pot, I wouldn't eat it. This is the rice pot right here, okay? This is a caldero. All right, let's start. Okay, so I have my pot on medium high and I'm gonna pour my oil in. So I said three tablespoons, but you wanna make sure that your oil is coating the bottom of your pot. So this is perfect. I'm gonna add my sofrito. So this is about two heaping tablespoons here. We're just gonna let this cook for a little bit. Ah, it smells so good. Now I'm gonna add my bouillon cube. Some people add the ham flavor packet. I believe Goya sells them. Um, but I like to use the bouillon cube. Or you can use one packet of powdered bouillon. I'm gonna add my sasson now. So it should be one tablespoon. If you don't have gen sasson, you should use one packet of whatever it is that you have. Now we're gonna add our peas. one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of adobo. I'll stir this to make sure everything is incorporated. This smells so good. Oh my gosh. Now we're gonna add our water. So you're going to use two cans of water. So in the beginning I mentioned how you we're using our can to measure. So fill your can up twice with water. Pour our water in now. So you're gonna bring this to a boil and you're going to taste it to make sure it's good with salt. If you feel like it needs a little bit more flavor, then you can add a little bit more of whatever. I usually add another teaspoon of adobo or salt, but it's totally up to you. I'm gonna add a little bit more of adobo. I'm gonna go in with another teaspoon. And I'm gonna add another teaspoon of salt. If you love olives or capers, when you add your beans, you should add maybe about 12 to 14 olives. In this recipe, I don't care for them, so I don't ever include it, but most rice we're going to do is have olives. I'm going to taste again to make sure I'm good now. Good. 
Your broth should be on the salty side before you add your rice because once your rice goes in, it'll soak up all that flavor and you wanna make sure that your rice is flavorful. So once this starts to boil, I will add my rice. So now we're ready to add our rice. So now you're just gonna cook this on high until your water evaporates. And then we're gonna mop the rice to the middle and lower the fire. So you just need to make sure you monitor this process so that you don't burn your rice. And make sure you stir it occasionally. So all of our water evaporated and I just mounted this rice to the middle to get off the walls of the pot. So now what I like to do is I have a piece of foil here. I put it in the pot and I cover the rice. Check it occasionally, stir it so that you mix the rice that's on the bottom to the top, cover it again. All right, so I would say this rice cooked for about 10 minutes. Now we're just going to flip it. So you wanna make sure the rice that was on top is now on the bottom. And then you're just gonna mount it again towards the middle, cover it again with the foil, and cook it for another 10 minutes. I just like to press it in the middle. This rice looks done to me. So the best way to know that your rice is done is one, by looking at it, and two, by tasting it. So when you taste it, if your grains are still hard, um, I would cover it again. Maybe drizzle a little bit of water and cover it with the top and let it cook a little bit longer. If your rice is too wet, a technique that I've learned to use, I've never had to do it, thank God, is you put a slice of bread in your pot because the bread will soak up all the moisture. So this rice is done. All right, so we're ready to eat. I have some grilled chicken here that I made with some pickled red onions to pair with my rice. So I'm just gonna eat a little bit of everything in my one bite. I feel like pickled onions go good with everything. Some rice on my floor. is a good add-on to this. Mm -hmm. All right, I like to finish that off camera. So if you want to take a chance on this recipe, please be sure to take a picture and tag my culinary page at G Culinary Adventures, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, bye!